In this video we are going to find out what a grey counter is, analyze two possible grey counters architectures and implement a grey counter using Verilog. The video also contains a test bench and the simulation results using ModelSim Intel FPGA edition. First let's see what a grey counter is. A standard binary counter cycles between consecutive binary values while a grey counter cycles between consecutive grey values. In a counter that uses grey codes, only one bit differs between two consecutive values, like the transition from 000 to 001. The advantage is that the differences between the propagation delays of the multi-bit bus value cannot be received as a value outside the interval current value, current value plus 1. Typically, a grey counter is used in FIFOs for crossing data between clock domains, which may be inside the chip or between the chip and the outside world. Grey codes prevent transient states being captured when the counter values crosses in another clock domain. In the schematic below we have an asynchronous FIFO that uses two grey counters to pass the read-write pointer values from one domain to another. Let's analyze now two grey counters architectures. Architecture 1 is based on a regular binary counter with a binary to grey encoder at the output. This is also called a false grey counter. The combinational circuit of the decoder can generate propagation delays or race conditions between the individual bits of the grey value that could propagate to a downstream module as noise. This architecture is not recommended to be used in designs. Architecture 2 is a pure grey counter because the value stored in the D flip-flops is a grey value. At each clock cycle the value is converted into binary code, incremented with 1, then converted back again into grey code and stored. The loop has large combinational delays for increased widths of the counter, like for 16-bit, but is acceptable for widths around 6 bit, which means 64 values. A FIFO with 64 locations may be more than enough for low data rate digital modules. And now it's action time! Now we're going to implement a 4 bit grey counter using architecture number 2. You also get to implement a test bench for it and simulate it using model sim. This design is based on the 4-bit grey encoder and decoder built on our previous video called How to implement a 4-bit grey encoder and decoder using Verilog and ModelSim. You can find a link to it in the video description. For this project you are going to need the following Verilog files. Grey encoder 4-bit.v Grey decoder 4-bit.v Grey encoder 4-bit.v and testbench grey counter 4-bit.v Testbench grey 4bit.v is optional and is used to test only the grey encoders. In this simple design we are going to instantiate the grey decoder and grey encoder, interconnect them together and store the value in a parallel in parallel out register. The mechanism behind this circuit is very simple. At reset the value is 0. After the reset gets deasserted, the register value is converted to a binary code then incremented with 1 and next is converted back to a grey code and stored in the register. All these conversions need to happen until the next edge of the clock. So this will bring a limit regarding the highest frequency that this circuit can operate at. To simplify everything, the first step is to name the signals on the block diagram. Bin out is the output of the grey to binary encoder. Bin in is obtained by incrementing with 1 the value of bin out. Next, bin in enters the grey encoder that outputs the next grey code which is stored in the register at the next pause edge. In this manner we generate consecutive grey codes at each positive edge of the clock. Now let's analyze the very low code. At lines 4 to 6 we declare the module's I.O. ports. We have only a clock. A reset n and the 4-bit grey counter value. 
At line 6, grey counter out is declared as output reg because it will be used in the left hand side of an always add block. At line 9 to 11, we declare the wires used to interconnect the blocks in our design. The names are the same as in our block diagram. This is a best practice used in the industry and I recommend you carefully name all your variables and nets with suggested names, not x, y or var1. At lines 14 to 24, we create the feedback network between the grey encoder and decoder. We first instantiate the decoder and connect its ports with the nets. Next, we increment the binary value and feed it into the encoder from line 21. Take your time and see how the red dotted rectangle is equivalent with the block level schematic. At line 26, we have a simple register active on posage clock with asynchronous reset n. The register simply stores the next grey code value and grey counter out at each positive clock. At line 26 we have a simple register active on posage clock with asynchronous reset n. The register simply stores the next grey code value in grey counter out at each posage clock. Voila! Our design is finished! Isn't this so easy? Let's now implement a simple test bench for our design. Please make a new file called testbench grey counter 4 bitv with the following content. The testbench structure is very simple. We first declare the testbench variables. We use the reg type for the module inputs and the wire type for the outputs. At line 10 we instantiate the module and connect it with the testbench variables. At line 17 we create a 1 MHz clock signal. The procedure from line 20 is used to monitor the grey counter output and will print the variable whenever it changes. The procedure from line 24 is used to create the reset sequence and stop the test bench after 40 nanoseconds. This is it. It's that easy to create a test bench. Let's analyze now the simulation results. After you run the test bench in model sim, you should get the following results. If you look at the yellow arrows, you can see the grey counter starts to cycle from the initial value. If we look at the console result, we can see how our counter takes sequentially all the 4-bit grey code values. Here you have the synthesis results for our circuit. You can see here how our grey counter architecture translated into a circuit using Verilog and a bit of magic. Congratulations, you designed and simulated a synthesizable grey counter for ASIC and FPGA. If you like this tutorial and you are interested in a practical and easy path to learning Verilog for ASIC and FPGA design and verification, I gladly recommend you my Udemy course called Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Verification. Your strong Verilog foundation is only one click away.